Hi, hope you're all doing good. So in this video, let's focus on hyoid bone. As you know, hyoid bone is a midline structure. It's a U-shaped bone which is present anteriorly in the midline of the neck between the chin and the thyroid cartilage somewhere here. And this hyoid bone develops from the second as well as third branchial arches. It is suspended by various muscles and ligaments and during rest it stays at the level of third cervical vertebra behind and base of the mandible in front and it helps in or it provides attachment to floor of the mouth and tongue upwards larynx downwards epiglottis and pharynx behind so today we'll have a brief overview of the hyoid bone including the attachments the developmental aspect and the clinical relevance as i said hyoid bone develops from the second and third branchial arches in fact to represent the surfaces of hyoid bone i have prepared this cardboard so that it would it would be easy for you to analyze and visualize the surfaces right which i'll go into detail a bit later so the upper part so this is the body of the hyoid right so hyoid has the following parts the body the greater horns and the lesser horns so the upper part of the body and the lesser horns are developed from second branchial arch whereas the lower part of the body and the greater horns develop from the third branchial arch so as i said hyoid bone has a body and two pairs of cornua or horns the lesser horns and the greater horns now it's a u-shaped structure and as you can see the body has two surfaces the anterior surface <coughs> and the posterior surface and the body has two borders upper border and lower border now coming to greater horns greater horns have two surfaces an upper surface and lower surface see remember in case of body it is upper border and lower border as you can see but in case of horn greater horn we have an upper surface and lower surface however we have a lateral border and a medial border this is very important so to represent this particular aspect I wanted to actually make this cardboard so that it will be easy for you to visualize because the same three-dimensional representation is not possible on board right so that's regarding various parts and also remember as the body extends posteriorly it extends posteriorly and narrows and tapers and ends in a tubercle so this narrowing and ending in form of tubercle is part of your greater cornua and the greater cornua and the body attachment here which you find is is not osseous initially it is fibrous in nature till the middle age and after the middle age there can be ossification and as you can see the lesser cornua is attached at the junction of the body and greater cornua and the attachment site is fibrous in nature often the lesser cornua which is conical in shape can be attached to greater cornua through synovial joints and also we can find ankylosis in some cases right so as i said the body has two surfaces anterior and posterior two borders upper and lower whereas the greater cornua has two surfaces upper surface and lower surface and two borders medial border and lateral border right so this is pertaining to the osteology aspect of hyoid bone i hope it's clear because understanding this uh, basic structure or parts of hyoid bone or any part of osteology is very essential in order to analyze and understand the attachments which you can see in the form of illustrations here so you have two illustrations one the anterior posterior view the other sagittal view so this is the anterior posterior view and when you section it in sagittal plane you'll have this sagittal view isn't it so as you can see this is the body this is the body of hyoid and this is the greater horn and this is the lesser horn and also you can see uh, the hyoid bone the cross section i am not exactly cross section but sagittal section of the hyoid bone and various attachments first we'll try to get familiarized with various structures which are present here and then we'll go into description pertaining to attachments but before that 
as I said, the development is very important. The upper part and the lesser corner develop from second branchial arch. The lower part and the greater horn develop from the third branchial arch. And the clinical relevance as stated uh, in the textbook is in suspected cases of murder, fracture of hyoid bone indicates throttling or strangulation, right? And coming to various attachments, before going into attachments, as you can see, we have various muscle attachments here. Geniohyoid, mylohyoid, genioglossus, hyoglossus, and you have middle constrictor, stylohyoid, digastric pulley, thyrohyoid, sternohyoid, omohyoid, and also we have various fascia, pretracheal facial attachment, investing layer of deep facial attachments, etc. And in the sagittal view, you can see the tooth, the alar part, the hyoid bone, and you can see various muscular attachments, genioglossus, and then you have a geniohyoid, mylohyoid, digastric anterior belly, investing layer of deep fascia, pretracheal fascia, stenohyoid muscle. So you have thyroid cartilage, epiglottis, arytenoid cartilage, lamina of cricoid, etc. So uh, various parts which can be seen in these illustrations. Now let's discuss the attachments in detail starting with the anterior surface of the body of the hyoid so this is what we are talking about first so if you observe the anterior surface of hyoid it is convex and it is directed upwards and forwards whereas the posterior surface is concave and it is directed downwards and backwards anterior surface receives attachments of the following muscles geniohyoid muscle as well as mylohyoid muscle so the same thing you can see here the anterior surface receiving attachments of geniohyoid muscle and mylohyoid muscle and also remember the anterior surface of the body of the hyoid gives origin to part of hyoglossus muscle which further extends on to the greater cornua that's very important now after completing the anterior surface attachments, now looking into the upper border attachments. The upper border of the hyoid receives the lower fibers of genioglossus muscle and also it receives thyrohyoid membrane. So that's pertaining to upper border. And coming to lower border, you can see pretracheal fascia attached to the lower border and in front of pretracheal fascia you have sternohyoid muscle which is being attached to the lower border. So the same thing you can see here. Stenohyoid muscle attaching to the lower border medially and omohyoid muscle which is attached on to the lateral aspect and just beneath the omohyoid muscle you have a linear attachment of thyrohyoid muscle so you can see a pretracheal fascia anterior or in front of pretracheal fascia you have muscle attachments of sternohyoid and omohyoid which is also evident here so these are some of the attachments of lower border which is again very important and then moving on to the greater horn or greater cornua the medial aspect of the greater cornua receives stylohyoid and digastric pulley and also thyrohyoid membrane whereas the lateral aspect of the hyoid bone receives thyrohyoid muscle anteriorly so this is what i was talking about if this is a greater corn or greater cornua or horn this will be the lateral aspect the inner one will be the medial aspect medial aspect towards the midline isn't it so greater horn the medial aspect receives stylohyoid and digastric pulley whereas the lateral aspect receives thyrohyoid muscle and you can clearly see that this lesser horn which is conical in shape is attached to the junction between the body and the greater horn receives stylohyoid ligament so this lesser horn is the area where there is attachment of stylohyoid ligament and also middle constrictor muscle originates posterolaterally from this lesser horn and extends on to the greater horn right so these are various attachments pertaining to hyoid bone now coming to textbook reference so i'll be referring to here so hyoid bone is u-shaped 
It develops from the second and third branchial arches. It is situated in the anterior midline of the neck between the chin and thyroid cartilage. At rest, it lies at the level of third cervical vertebra behind and base of the mandible in front. It is kept suspended in position by muscles and ligaments. And the hyoid bone provides attachment to floor of the mouth and tongue above, larynx below, and epiglottis and pharynx behind. The bone consists of a central part called the body and two pairs of cornua, the greater and the lesser. The body has anterior and posterior surfaces, upper and lower borders. Anterior surface is convex and is directed forwards and upwards. It is often divided by a median ridge into two lateral halves. The posterior surface is concave and is directed downwards and backwards. Each lateral end of the body is continuous posteriorly with the greater horn or cornua. However, till middle life, the connection between the body and greater cornua is fibrous. And the greater cornua, these are flattened from above downwards. Each cornua tapers posteriorly but ends in a tubercle as evident here ends in a tubercle and also it has two surfaces upper and lower and two borders medial and lateral borders and lesser cornua these are small conical pieces of bone which project upwards from the junction of the body and greater cornua the lesser cornua are connected to the body by fibrous tissue. Occasionally, they are connected to greater cornua by synovial joints, which usually persist throughout life, but may get ankylosed. Now, coming to the attachments of hyoid bone. The anterior surface of the body <coughs> provides insertion to geniohyoid and mylohyoid muscles and also gives origin to part of hyoglossus muscle. Right, so these are the anterior surface attachments, and this hyoglossus muscle extends onto the greater horn, as evident in the illustration. And the upper border of the body provides insertion to lower fibers of genioglossus and attachment to the thyrohyoid membrane, as we have discussed previously. And the lower border of the body provides attachment to pretracheal fascia. So pretracheal fascia and also in front of the fascia the sternohyoid is attached medially and omohyoid is attached laterally and below the omohyoid there is a linear attachment of thyrohyoid muscle extending back to the lower border of the greater horn and the medial border of greater cornua provides attachment to thyrohyoid membrane, stylohyoid muscle, digastric pulley. This is what we were talking about. The medial border of greater cornua provides attachment to thyrohyoid membrane, stylohyoid muscle and digastric pulley. Whereas the lateral border of the greater cornua provides insertion to thyrohyoid muscle anteriorly. And the investing fascia is attached throughout its length as you can see here the investing layer and the lesser cornua provides attachment to stylohyoid ligament at its tip and the middle constrictor muscle arises from the posterolateral aspect extending onto the greater cornua right and coming to the development the upper part of the body and lesser cornua develop from the second branchial arch the lower part of the body and greater cornua develop from the third arch and the clinical anatomy in a suspected case of murder, fracture of hyoid bone indicates strangulation or throttling. So this is in brief about hyoid bone. I hope it's clear.